Hi everyone, I'm Alex with our walking and today I'm going to be showing you how to paint a skeleton body from the age of six months. Some of you here will be explaining you as much detail as you can for those who paint skeletons of any kind, also outside the age of six months, so they can be tuned. So for the techniques that we will be using to paint this, we will be required to paint it quite white. a bit of skeleton bone in here that I should make sure to cover. Once again, don't be afraid to hit because the contrast color is very good at also simply creating shades and shadows, giving you a bit of a cover-up in case you mess up, and most people do. Just like how uh, drawing artists are in need of rubbers and erasers, painting artists <clears throat> should always have some extra white here so they can go back and fix it in case something goes wrong broad strokes with the skeleton horse and now while we are using a citadel contrast we won't be using citadel paints only we will also be going to use some army painting bottles this process is intended to take about 30 to 40 minutes to produce a pretty nice looking skeleton by the end of it here we go, make, make sure that you draw the paint so it doesn't clutter too much by the head. It can clutter near the edges where the uh, eye sockets are going to be. But don't leave it cluttering on the top of the skull because that will create some nasty puddles that you do not want. Or with this method, do not, you might for others. Um, should go into the crevices down here, cover them up quite nicely go get the fingers and now for the front of the legs simply sweep by like so here you can <clears throat> here you can let it clutter just a bit that's not going to make much of a difference by the legs because we will be returning to them once we get into highlighting there we go and just a bit. You can thin it down if you want a very bright um, skeleton, but as you are going to apply, be applying brighter lights later on in the process, I do myself find that going with the straight out of the button works quite well. Here we go. Like so. And Taking a quick skin, we missed a spot up here. We should draw it. There we go. I use contrast paints here only as a base paint. There is, are going to be a lot of highlights. There we go. There we go, getting the hand as well. And there we go. Now it has been covered in bone. Skeleton hordes. Now we are going to be painting the metal, and for that I will be using 
gunmetal from the army painter this one and i'm not going to use this purely out of the bottle i'm going to add just a bit of water usually two drops and then stir it a bit so thin it down always remember thin down your non-contrast paints also shades shades often and tones often need a bit of water as well just to be nice i am once again going to be using the regiment brush to apply this so get the model out and apply it to the metallic parts for this particular skeleton that would be the sword Go. And nice, it can be a, a pretty thick coat here. Just make sure that if there are any uh, crevices, that you don't get too much in there because you want the shade to really sink in. But for this one, we'll do this. Now, I'll need to be a bit more precise with it. And so, my brush here, I twist at the edge of my dry palette. And then I apply to the shield, like so. So here and here, there we go. I can also see that I actually missed a piece of skeleton right there because it has a skull which is going to be painted in skeleton holes. So we'll return in a moment to do that once we are done with the metallic paints. Remember that you should never ever uh, use metallic paints with your wet palette because it can cause some of the fibers to disperse and ruin the sponge beneath. So don't do that. Most people will tell you so. Look at this, we have applied metal successfully to the edges. Here we go. I always start with a darker tone of metal and then I move upwards. Now here we have a very different metal in here. It's the chainmail. For that I'm going to try to paint it by side swiping my brush a bit so that I won't get too much paint into the little holes. So run the brush sideways and stroke it quite a few times like so go there we go like so for this particular shield it's made of metal and so I will also be painting everything in here in metal some many skeletal shields actually um, use wood and so I most often use wood for the inners of the skeleton shields, but this one is a metallic one. So we'll be using metal in here. There we go. Having a look at the edges of the shield, just to make sure that I don't leave any blind spots. Like so, because the edges are annoying to fix later. Let's check, it looks fairly covered up. Now, as you can see, I went a bit back just to get the skull on the shield as well with the skeleton hordes. Now we will be moving on to anything that would be leather or brown made of wood. And for that, we will be using the Army Painters Leather Brown. Give it a good shake and apply to your wet palette or choice of palette. I do use wet myself. There we go. I'll just stir it a bit using any pencil that you're not or brush that you're not really using anything can be used here. Stir it a bit. Make sure you have the right consistency. Like so it doesn't you don't want it to be all wet like a wash. You want it to have still a bit of filling without being too much. Now for spears I would go with the regimental brush just to cover it up quickly. But since this is a sword hilt I will be using the details brush, applying just a bit, like so, right here. 
go. Then I'm going to turn it and apply it right here. There we go. Like so. And then this skeleton has a belt that springs right here. Let's make sure to get that as well with the leather brown. Make sure you get in here, like you can see here, there's a bit of white that I missed around the edges. Let's make sure to get that as well. He runs all the way down here to this point. Making sure to get the edge as well. Oh, sorry. Making sure to get the edge as well here. There we go. And that's it for the brown. Get the edge. For the next part, we are going to be applying the first heraldic color. This would be the colors of your army. Uh, for me, I use a combination of turquoise and purple. So I will be starting off with the alien purple from the army painter. Applying a bit into the wet brush or the wet palette, of course. Add a bit. Just a bit more water to fill it down. There we go. And I'll be grabbing my thin regiments brush once again. So make sure that I don't get too much. And I'll first be applying to my shield, like so. I, of course, try to be careful not to get too much on the metal. This is a bit of precision work. There we go. And so I also, this is my choice, of course, because this is how my heraldry works for this. Add purple to the opposite side. like so so to have it match the other skeletons i've painted i'm also going to be painting much of the clothes it has purplish so we'll be running that here way down here good like this This. Make sure you get it both sides if it is a two sided piece of cloth that the skeleton is wearing. Like this. Make sure you get the top edge. I often forget that. So we take a look here, and I can see that I've actually painted this part purple. So I should also go here below the chainmail and make sure that it is purple as well. Get the lower edge. Like so, and move in here, like this, there we go, and that's it for purple. Moving into the turkeys uh, heraldry, I'll be using Hydra turkeys from the army painter. Let's apply it right here, Good. once again, get it into the wet palette, apply just a tad of water to fill it down. Stir it well. This one needs a bit more, I believe. There we go. Clean the brush. Get your mini and get out your details brush. We will be applying to the pieces of heraldry that did not get purple, so we will start over here. I am using uh, turkeys and, um, and purple to add these dread dead colors. I feel there's some coldness. You can tell that these are colors of the dark world. And I feel that goes well with death armies and death minis. Also, tur turkeys and purple looks 
pretty good together. Here we go. Make sure once again, try to not hit the metal. And if you do, do not worry, you can go back, pause and fix it. You have all the time you need to get your own minis done. There we go. Now that shield got pretty good. Eh? So we will be doing the rest of the heraldry now. Moving on to the cloth straps that we didn't do purple. So like this. Like this. If you're in doubt of what you want a single piece to be like, this could have been a, like an ankle chain. I'm starting to think it could be like a handcuff or a leg cuff or something that he was tied to something. Just, just paint it how you see it because at the end of the day, it's your mini. So while this could have been a chain, I'm going to be painting it as a piece of its heraldry because it's my mini, so that's my choice. Adding the turquoise up here as well. Go. Go. Like so. And all the way up. And there's just a few more pieces. This one has a lot of heraldry actually. A lot of scarves and tattered cloth pieces. I'm currently doing the one in here. Like so, go in here. Good. was actually pretty difficult to get in there without hitting the chain wheel. This is why we used the regimental brush for this, or the uh, details brush for this, of course. Now for the final strap. There are no white spots lying in wait for us. There we go. There we go. Starting to look pretty decent already. Right, so I had a tiny camera accident in which my tripod decided to flip over, but I now have some bright gold from the army painter attached to my regiment brush, and I'll just be adding that to the bottom hilt of the sword. I would like to think that maybe this soldier was of noble birth once and is now fighting in the armies of Nagash. There we go. And so. And so we are done with the regular basing of the of the miniature. For the next part of the painting, we will be using Strong Tone from the Army Painter. You could also use Agrax Earth Shade or any other brownish tint tone shade you want to use. I apply just a bit of water to two drops in my dry palette. As you can see over here, bring it down. And for this, I'm grabbing the biggest brush I have available. I have this one, which I stole from my daughter, just giving it a bit wet. You can treat this brush in harsh ways because all it needs to do is sap up and apply to the model. 
this does not need to be pretty. It simply needs to cover up and create this feel of earthly tones, especially on the weapon. There we go, on the chest, on the metal, making it seem, I guess rusty might be the right word, right? It also creates this nice sink of toning, which is why I like to use the army painter one, because I feel like the Agrax earth shape doesn't do this quite as well. Get it in there. This will also cover up mostly um, any bare spots of white that you might have left behind while you painted the skeleton horde part of your skeleton. Now it has to dry. While waiting for the soft tone to, a uh, strong tone of course, to dry up, we will be starting to work at the base of the model. So. I use, this is anything you prefer, right? But for this, I'll be teaching you how, or showing you how to make some muddy earth, muddy dirt, uh, with a few rocks and a bit of grass. And for that, I start off by taking my Wildwood Contrast and with the Regiment brush, I apply it to the entire base, including the trim, because this also sort of paints the trim. Leaving out a white trim, uh, I think looks a bit weird, you could. Of course, paint it in the uh, heraldry of your army as well. For my ultramarines, I did use techless blue to the trim so that I always know where they belong. But for this, simply apply Wildwood Brown to the entire base. And as you can probably tell, it's sort of actually already creating this grainy pigment, which does resemble smaller rocks. There we go. And mud. There we go. Once you are certain that you have cleaned that up, you are about ready to move on. As our skeleton warrior is now starting to dry up, you can already see that it is ready for battle. But what we're going for here isn't just a tabletop ready. We want to enhance it quite a bit and create a more realistic and more bright feel to it as well. So we will be proceeding by using the Citadel Layer Ushapti Bone. Give it a good stir, good shake, and then get some of it out into your choice of wet palette or other palette. As before, you're going to need quite a bit, so I always make sure I add quite enough of it. So, we thin it down once again. There go. Thin it down using plain water. There we go. Clean up the brush. And now you reach for your details brush. And this is where you have to start being careful not to mess anything up. Because this is where moving backwards is going to take time. Because you'll need to reapply a lot of things. You go to the edges about one millimeter from the edge and start applying. Like so. It can be a bit thicker than a usual edge light. Because this is not the actual edge light. This is more to show off that bony structure. So about this thick. Is what we're going for. Go for the arms, brush sideways like this, all the way down here, and make sure that I keep some inwards curve. Apply to the bony dots that are coming from here, and once again, run the brush sideways. A lot of sideways brush here. Again, look at that. Make sure that each bone has a crevice between it and the next one. That's actually the most important thing here, because that's how you can tell that it's a skeleton and not a meaty hand. 
go. Oh, I hate this part. Oh, I love it, but um, doing the fingers, you will have probably have to rewind if you're anything like me at least a dozen times over before it finally sits well with you. Just a bit. Just a teensy, weensy bit to create a bit more brightness to the bone. Going for neck here as well. Go and now, oh, the rib cage. The rib cage is so bad because if you accidentally uh, reach in between the ribs, you can create a clogger that's actually really difficult to remove without using acetone. And I really don't want to do that. Stroke the ribs one by one. Just ever so slightly. Brighten them up. Go for the legs. Once again, make sure you get every bone. So that there's still some darkness there to show where it separates. The feet, you don't have to be quite as careful because they are, um, many of the feet aren't well, very well forged in the plastic. And so it's not always as well as this one where you can actually tell where the bones are. Just keep to making sure that you only hit one bone at a time. If you're ever in doubt, just don't take the stroke. Measure again until you feel comfortable with making and applying the paint. It's easier to think an extra time than going back and redoing it. Go. There you go. Go. Boop, 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 boop. Sideways strokes for the feet. Once again, easier. So for the shield, which is also a skull, we'll be going in and highlighting the closest to the center. Like this. And the eyes. Do it nice down here. There we go. And now, simply stipple. Stipple so calmly and go just a bit up here as well so that there's a shadow reaching downwards towards the flat end. Going back up here you can also catch any place in which you mispainted before like I did right there. No one can tell once you're done. There we go. Back here. Just about a millimeter. Got a bit, a bit too much there actually, but it's quite all right. You also have to remember that you can allow yourself to make mistakes. And just learn from them. There you go. Uh, there, of course, I dipped a bit too much, so I go in a bit thick, making it seem like it was supposed to be there. And look at that, nobody knew. Go, cover up there, cover up there, cover up there. There, get right to there, there we go. Now here, once again, keep it. There we go. And around here as well. Right now, for the very difficult part of painting skeletons, I think, it is the spine. So you can see probably, there we go. Sidewards, small, gentle, very gentle strokes. Just apply a very, very, very small amount of paint. And for the backwards ribs, And as you can see, I messed up there. So I clean out my brush and I go in to see if I can pick it out. And usually it can be saved 
or thinned down so much that you won't be able to notice after a quick fix. One of the ways to quick fix it is to go backwards. Uh, you can start over if you're a very big perfectionist. That's fine. Uh, to each their own. I usually apply another layer of shading to the exact spot in which I missed. And that will take care of it unless you zoom in very far. So for the skull, the head skull, once again, highlight the visible edges. See, his face is becoming much clearer. He was a smiley chapper, this one. There we go. Of course he was before he died and became a servant of Nagash. There we go. And once again, we don't want this rough texture up here, and so we apply just bits down here. So there's still some shade looming at the bottom of the skull, but we want it to be a bit brighter up here near the surface, which is easily fixed with a layer of this Ushapti bone. There we go. There we go. Just a bit more down here. And a bit more to the neck. Go, let's have a look. What did we miss? We missed just a bit of the arm over here. Go in. Go in over here. Apply just a bit to the top fingers to make them a bit brighter. And there we go. He is already looking much more bony than he was before. Now we proceed to the heraldic highlights. We are going to be using the Oozing purple from the army painter, of course, for the purple parts. So, once again, bit down, water up. Actually, I think I got a bit too much into the palette there, but it seems rather okay now. Clear it up. And proceed to grab your details brush. A bit to the point, as we did with the Ushapti bow. And this is where we apply a bit of the heavy metal. And we are going to be edge highlighting the purple. Move ever so slightly along visible edges to keep it good and bright, like so. I feel this add a bit more depth to the miniature without taking over completely. I usually don't go for the entirely white highlights. For one thing, they make it quite easy to tell if you made a mistake and you want to look at it as a learning opportunity, not as a failure. I think these just slightly brighter highlights do that quite well. Is because I can still see if things go entirely wrong, but it doesn't bang me in the head. There we go. But just a bit brighter up there. And over here we had down here. And down, apply to the edge. For the shield, it's already pretty well highlighted. I'll just add just a few small strokes and make sure not to catch any of the place, any of the places which had a lot of shade, like this. And then, like here, there are small holes in the shield. So I'll be doing a bit of edge highlighting to them as well, but only ever so slightly because you don't want to take anything away from the miniature. It's just in the right amount, like so. Leave it to settle in. For the turquoise highlights, we will be using a bit of a blending technique. And so I'll be cracking open, open this bottle of Viking Blue from the Army Painter. And I'll add just a bit right here. 
just a little bit right next to the turquoise. I will be drawing a lot of water in between here and then start stirring until the two pools find each other and I'll draw a bit together like so. As you can see they blend quite well. Chris Green because um, blue is one of the ingredients for blue as you mix blue and yellow to make it. There we go, it is now a bit brighter than the regular turquoise. So we will be using that right here in the center as the highlight color. So we'll draw to the edge here. And if you make it a bit too blue, just come back and add a bit of turquoise afterwards. No harm done. Add to the edges using your details brush. Sure you also get any bending edges, just a bit, just to like create that slightly shiny feel. Go like so. So come up here. Don't be afraid when you have large ed edges to go a bit broad. You need it to be bright and clearly visible. Like so. Once again, using a bit of horizontal strokes here to get it in there. Like this. There we go. That looks pretty nice for the cloth. Now we will be going to the shield. And once again, same as with the purple, we try to add just a bit out getting into the shade shade parts and try to add a bit to the edges so there's like a natural shade falling on the shield like this that looks pretty good quite satisfying our skelly pal is turning out quite well so far, but now we are moving into the really bright bony stuff. And for that, we'll be using matte white in a blend with the Ushapti bone. So once again, I give up the shake, the stir here. We get a bit out. Oh, that's too much, way too much. Let's hope we can control it. Grab our blending brush. And now I'm going to move it a bit because I got way too much, right? Draw on water and start mixing with the Ushapti bone, blending. And I don't want it to be entirely white, so we'll have to fix that. Maybe a bit more water here. It's, it's all depending on how bright you want your bones to end up. I don't want mine to be white, so I'll just keep blending until I am satisfied. This right here is looking pretty good. It's it's pretty bony. I would say that's a good bony color. It's, you can tell it's brighter than the Oshapti brown and yet it is not completely white anymore. That's sort of the tone I'm going for. Grab out your details brush and now it's time to get dangerous because we are going to be applying this very carefully just to brighten up his stay a bit make him just a bit more shiny around here and down to the edges we go there we go teeth horizontally stroked teeth Go. 
I also like to add this to the forehead, the top of the skull. And this is where I can actually tell that it might still be a bit much. On the bright side, it's to be still a bit too white. So we will reach down and fix it. Because we like fixing things by adding just a bit more shatty bone to the mix. Go. See if we can save this. Because I think that got a bit too bright. Let's try it out. Go, that's much better. It's a bit browner now. I don't think you can actually tell. But only to the like top half of the skull and then the lines. Now moving on. This is where you do the edge highlight, which means you're trying to only just barely get any at all on the edges of these bones. And this is the difficult part. This is what makes people cry at night. Just ever so slightly getting in contact with the edges. Like this. I use a horizontal brush stroke for the arm. Like this. Like this. This is where you have to really concentrate, because if you screw this up, you're going back for weeks or minutes, still like 30 minutes, but who wants to do that anyway? Just the top of the bones, just like the very, very top of the bones, it needs to get a bit brighter here, like so. It's actually turning out quite nice already. Let's do the ribs now. Once again, these are where things can go very wrong in a very, very short amount of time. Be very. Ah, look at that. Just as I said it. It's funny, right? I painted like 10 of these in the last couple of days, and no mistakes. And now I'm recording it. So of course, everything has to go wrong. There we go. Just clean it out, clean it out. The good thing about thinning down your paints is that it's much easier to remove them again. As you can see right now, from the chest piece, you can barely tell I missed. So that's good. All right, we'll keep going. It usually happens for me when I get my paint too wet. So it starts to, um, so it starts to run. That's when it usually splits from where I'm actually trying to paint. And then I just go back and fix it. Get a bit on the edges to make it a bit brighter to look at. Like so. Like so. Like so. Here we go. It's coming along quite nicely. I might smush it a bit there again. So it looks, uh, I think that got a bit too thick, didn't it? That thickened up again. Let's try to draw it from out there. Let's see if we can draw it out. Yes, yes, much nicer. Now it's like a moving into a brighter brown and then into the bone color and then a bit. Very dark. That's nice. Like this. Much better. And get the edges of the feet as well. Never forget feet, even if they are annoying to paint. Feet, boots. Make sure you get them right. Go, go, just about the edges, just by the edges still. Now, once again, vertical, small, horizontal, not vertical, dear God, no, not, not vertical, horizontal, small strokes at the center 
the spine with just a millimeter in between. So as you can see quite properly where the bones disconnect, if there are no joints. Go back and apply yet another layer to the ribs. Nice, that ended up quite well. I said before actually painting the right one, let's bet I'm about to screw this up again. No, nope, it didn't, that's nice. There we go. Landed that one quite nicely. Did we miss anything? I don't think we did. It's starting to come up. Let's add a bit more brightness to the shield as well here. We can really tell the skull apart. Like so. There we go. And then the thumb. In a bone. There we go. And I can actually see here that we missed a piece of the arm over here. So we're just going to once again have the same strokes as before. Wow, that is looking pretty good. To finish off the metal, we will be using plate mail metal from the um, painter. Just get, once again, a few drops into your, that's actually too much, but get a bit into your palette. And throw some water in there. This one you'll need to thin down quite a bit so it doesn't take over anything. Because we are at the final steps and we really, really do not want to mess up at this point. There we go. Thin it down quite well. And get out your details brush. Apply just a bit. Tip. And first of all, we are going to be applying to the shield where we use it on these small dots to make them brighter, like so. Now we're going to run it about the edge, sidewards stroking, just a bit. You're not supposed to like tell that it's there, it's supposed to look like the edges are more lit than they would have been otherwise, just simply supporting what is already there. Don't let it take over. It's going to be a bit much. Curve with the shield. Don't force it. Curve it with. Same here now. The shield has a lot of lines here. So we apply just a bit in here. Just a bit over here. Just a bit there. Just a bit there. Then we follow these carefully. Get about the edges. Get about the edges. There we go, that's the shield. Now for the sword, I apply to the short sides here. Well, actually, the long sides, but you know, the, one, the thin ones, the thin sides, I apply to. There we go, simply to make it seem brighter from up and brighter from below, like so. Get in there just a bit from the side so you can still tell it's a bit darker in there than it is on the edges. Now trace this line down the middle just as well as you can. Because that's where it has its high points. There we go. So the chainmail is very, very annoying to highlight. I am going to simply add a bit near the edges. Because I already feel like, if you look, it actually looks rather well. So I just add a bit to the edges there. 
Let me watch a pitch up here. And there you go. There's your painted skeleton. I was about to say, but we're still missing one point. So we are reaching the final piece of the skeleton model before we move into basing. And we are going to be applying a bit more bright gold as we did before, because we're going to keep this shiny. So we'll be applying it to the hilt, stir a bit. Go just to make it bright and clear where the hilt is. There you go. And I'm not going to cut for this. I'm going to paint the gem on the hilt in the heraldic color. So I'm going to make it turquoise on this side and purple, bright purple, on the other side. There we go. That's the skeleton model done. Let's move on to basing. I base most of my models in three simple steps. First of all, I'm using Army Painter uh, exclusively terrain because uh, I felt that was more me than the terrain piece. So first we'll be applying the Battlefield Spacing Glue, which is water-based, so you can clean it off most things that you use to apply it. So I apply it just a bit to the base, like this. Two pretty gentle dots. And I grab this. This is a letter opener that I got from uh, many, many years ago. Um, and I use it to swipe this water-based glue around the base, like so. Don't be afraid to get some of your miniature. I know it's white now, but it won't actually be showing up later. There you go. There you go. So now that it's all white, you take this letter opener or whatever you use to scoop it and dump it in water because that will dissolve all the glue. Make sure you get the lid back on your glue or it dries up. For the next step, I grab the terrain I want to add. I use these. These are like, you know, rough earth or something, small rocks. Let's call them small rocks. And I just, uh, I grab a few between my fingers like this. And then I drizzle onto the glue. Making sure to cover as much as I can at the step. It sort of lo looks like when you're growing like your own uh, herbs and such with the seeds. There you go. Now you have this on. Okay. So. No, my. When you drizzle your dirt on top of the base like this, it makes for a rather nice look. Um, but I would recommend you be smarter than I, what I was right here, and I told myself many times not to do it. Don't do it atop your dry palette, or you will have to change it all, or your wet palette. Or you'll have to change all your paints afterwards. It happens, everyone screws up in times. Well, next up, to apply grass to the dirt, just to give it a bit of a differential, I use a bit of Loctite super glue. You could use most kinds of super glue here. Just really carefully. Don't use an empty bottle. I have many of these lying around. Sometimes they end up empty. Let's see if this one has any left. It does. Just apply where you want the grass to go. And then reach for your grass. I keep mine in this so it doesn't like go away. Once again, reach in with your fingers and try not to apply more than just a slight drizzle near the edges, which will make for patches of grass. I also like to apply some to the other side so that it seems like there are terrain features on both sides of the model. go so can drizzle just place it down finally I apply a bit of super glue in between the grass or right behind the model right there and I add a single larger piece of terrain 
for this one, we'll go with one of these rocks. These are larger rocks from the arm painter. Apply them. I think they're actually making the cork from wine bottles. So push down for, I guess, five to ten seconds. One, two, three, four, five. And it should stick there. And now you have a pretty well-based miniature. By the very end of everything, you are going to end up with something like this. A decently quite well-lit skeleton on a pretty well-detailed base with a few terrain pieces. It definitely qualifies as above tabletop standard. And as you can tell, this took me somewhere between 30 and 45 minutes in total, even with the errors. A pretty decent method to go to for skeletons. I would like to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Leave any comments and feedback down below. We'll be seeing you next time at our war game.